بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Praise be to Allah the Lord, Cherisher and Sustainer of the Worlds the Most Gracious, the Most Merciful, the Master of the Day of Judgment All praise is due to Allah and His peace and blessing be upon His last messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His pure family, His loyal companions and all those who followed Him with righteousness and good deeds until the Day of Judgment, Amin Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Allah Almighty mentioned the alternation of day and night and the uh, other creatures from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran in many places. Uh, interestingly, in the first place that this is mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily, in the alternation of the day and night and the rest of the creature, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there are verses or signs for those of mind, those who are mindful, those who are intellectuals. That is in the first place. Next, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned a similar thing, verily in the alternation of the day and night and the creation of the heavens and earth, are signs for ulul albab here this is a second level so it's not only about knowing or the knowledge about what benefit do you put from that knowledge ulul albab we have already discussed them before so here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those people who when they see these signs from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is creatures from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they think about it they think about the creation from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how vast how delicate, how precise, how wise. And then this leads them to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the second one. Now the third place where this is mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verily in the alternation of the day and night and the creation of the heavens and skies are signs for al-muttaqoon, people who are pious. That is a third level, which is, okay, fine. So you have the knowledge, and now this guided you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now about fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, observing the rules from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is just a glimpse about the preciseness in the Holy Quran. Now, interestingly, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about this, he said that the creation, this whole creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to show people signs in them till the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, we will certainly show them our signs in the universe and in their own creation until they realize that this is the truth. Until they realize that the Holy Quran is the truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this is the word from God Almighty. And we have many of such things mentioned in the Holy Quran that we are just recently knowing about. Starting from the origin of the universe, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks specifically to the disbelievers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, having the disbeliever observed that the heavens and earth were one single joined un unity, one entity, joint entity, and we split them apart. That the, well, probably some scholars say this refers to what is called the Big Bang. It was all one unity, and then it split apart. Now, interestingly, in the same ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, and he says, and we made from water every living thing. Another proof, scientific proof. Every living thing depends on water. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends the verse with saying, will they still not believe? Will they still not believe that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who knows about this? Only the creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are only recently knowing about that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also spoke about the expansion of the universe. And verily we have created the heavens with the strength and we are expanding it. Still expanding on a regular basis. How does anybody know about that except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Interestingly, among all the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the universe, the Holy Quran speaks specifically about some of them. Most notably, the sun. There is one chapter in the Holy Quran named after that, chapter of the sun. 
And in it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make an oath by the sun and its light. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues speaking about that. Then towards the middle of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the creation of us and the guidance of us. You can use it and misuse it. You are guided to goodness and to wickedness. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the one who succeed is the one who purify this soul. Probably some interesting thing is that any kind of fiery light similar to the sun that we know about nowadays can be used and misused. You can put it to good use or to bad use. It can give you light and it can cook your food and it can benefit you, it gives you warm or it can get forbid, destruct and cause destruction. So this is the most important element or link between you and them. Now, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the sun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said one interesting fact. And he said that he made into our sky for us the sun as a lamp, as a lantern, burning light. Now, we recently knew that the sun is actually burning. Nobody knew about this except extremely recently. Now we realize the sun is actually a burning star. And it is extremely hot. Scientists estimate that the outer layer of the sun, the outer surface, the heat there is approximately 5,500 uh, Celsius degree. 5,500. While the core of the sun is burning and the heat there is estimated at 15 million degrees Celsius. What reaches us here is just a fraction. With all the protection of the earth, we only get the benefits from the sun. We only get the benefits from the sun. Interestingly, there is a link between us and the sun, whether we like it or not. We need it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran that it is Allah Almighty who made the sun to serve you. The sun is serving us. So the day and the night and the sun and the moon are serving you, subhanAllah. Allah created them to serve you. Are they serving us? Yes, for sure. Scientists believe that almost all kind of life on earth depends upon the sun energy. Now, subhanAllah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about making the sun serve us, this gives us glimpses. Some of them are what people are trying now about the solar energy, what is called the solar energy, trying to benefit from that. And the UAE is one of the leaders in the world, alhamdulillah. In practice, we have the first full-fledged capital that is based ex exclusively on the sun or solar system, which is Masdar in Abu Dhabi. And we have here the other one by Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid also in Dubai, trying to uh, benefit from the solar system. Now, this is one element of being serving us as well. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also spoke about a different thing. A glimpse that is hinted at in the story of Ahl al-Kahf, the people of the cave, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected them for such a long time, but they didn't miss the sun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke that the sunlight will reach inside the cave, will reach them, but they will not get the direct beam of the sun. So they'll get the benefit from it without the harm of it for such a long time. This is a glimpse, a hint that we need sunlight for our own health and our own well-being, which is a reality that has been proven nowadays. Another thing that is linked between you and the sun, that is the link with the prayers, with the religious worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The timing of the day in Islam is usually linked with the sun. The monthly one is usually linked with the moon. The yearly one is linked with both the moon and the sun. Now for the daily one, the salah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Holy Quran to establish the salah in the midday. And after the sun has moved, which is the, the midday, this is the Vuhr prayer after the shadow of a thing becomes twice its size, uh, or one, one more time its size, then this is the time for Asa prayer. And with the sunset, this is the Maghrib prayer. And with the disappearance of the uh, afterglow of the sun, the reddish afterglow of the sun, 
or the twilight of the sun, that is when the Isha prayer happens. And with the true dawn, this is the Fajr prayer. All of them are linked with what? With the sun. And furthermore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that these timings of the sun are the best time to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to glorify and make tasbih to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praise him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said specifically and glorify and praise your Lord at the sunrise and the sunset and at other times. But those are also specific good times that many people neglect. After Fajr, you should not go to sleep. It's preferable to spend that time in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dua and supplication and recitation of the Holy Quran till after sunrise by approximately 15 minutes or so. And similarly, before sunset. Now, furthermore, it is linked as well with an interesting fact. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran that the sun is running to its destination. Running. This is the measurement, the precise measurement of your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The all-knowing, the wise. The all in might and the all-knowing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, nowadays, we understand from science that the sun is actually moving and quite fastly. The sun is moving at the speed, approximated speed of 220 kilometer per second. It's going around the center of the galaxy. It is estimated that it is 24 or 26,000 light year from the center of the galaxy. It will need approximately 250 million years to finish one round only about it. Just going once. This is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How does anybody know that the sun is moving at this speed? Had the Messenger of Allah told them that this is actually moving at this precise speed, nobody would have believed him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, verily, it is running. Literally. SubhanAllah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the sun and the moon and the earth that all of them are floating into space. Floating in the universe. Do you float in nothing or do you float in something? You have to float in something, right? Another medium. And that is why there is nowadays, it seems that there is something that we do not know about. They are calling it the dark energy. Nobody knows what it is. Something is missing there. It's not only what we see. There is another type of thing that is we cannot see. Scholars estimate that this is actually accounting to more than 97% of the space. 97% of the space is missing. We do not know what is holding all of that together. Something is holding it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to this in the Holy Quran. Verily Allah Almighty is holding the universe and the earth, all the creatures in the universe, and with his might and with his power. Else they would have disappeared. They would have scattered around. Now, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us all of these glimpses so that it will guide us to him, to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so that you will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that you will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Protect yourself from the punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now despite all of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned us that this great creature from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it is not extremely major because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that Shi'ra as one of the mighty or uh, huge stars in the, in, the, in the universe. So the sun is actually a small one. But still to us, this is a major one. This is the most important direct one to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that eventually is going to fade. Eventually, it's going to faint. It's not going to disappear completely, at least because there is a hadith from the Messenger وسلم, that toward the hereafter, the sun will be completely dark with absolutely no light, but it will still be emitting some heat and it will become close to the people in the day of judgment, causing them to sweat. And each one is sweating according to his bad deed. So he will be protected from that sweat by his good deeds. So the sun will continue with us till the day of judgment. But it's not going to be the same thing. Everything is going to change. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in the day of judgment, everything is going to change. The universe and the earth 
and all their in is going to be replaced, going to be changed. Lots of changes are going to happen. That is in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For us, we need to appreciate the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the gifts, all the other creatures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitated for us. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused to serve us. We should know about the creation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The majesty of the creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. The wisdom, the preciseness of the creation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of that is extremely the whole universe, the whole creation is interconnected. And it is so precise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, Verily, we have created everything in precise measurement. For sure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that there is a delicate balance in this universe. We need to take care of that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created the heavens and the earth and established the balance. Do not transgress in the balance. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Establish the balance and do not transgress into that balance. And But people are not doing any good thing regarding that. People are doing the exact opposite. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, we'll conclude with this that people are not going to take good care of this creation. They are going to cause mischief and corruption in this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, destruction and corruption has appeared on land and on sea because of what the hands of people did. Because of the action of human being. The creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking care of itself, by itself, no worry. But when you interfere, you have to be careful and you have to be wise. Else you are going to cause destruction and corruption. This is what we are doing nowadays. People are not taking good care of this universe and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's also our duty towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take good care of his creation. To use it but not misuse it. To put it to good use. To take care of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not cause corruption or destruction. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to his divine truth. Make it good for ourselves and everyone around us. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa